Well, welcome to the Cinnabar. It's a little brisk this morning here on the ranch, but at least it's climbed up to the positive side of zero. Now, the, the cows are all fed, the, the ice is all chopped, so it seems like an awfully good day to go start a fire in the shop and work on a couple of Winchesters. So that's exactly what we're going to do. Now, one of our viewers who's become a friend brought me this, this really neat old cowboy-owned 1890 Winchester that uh, he inherited from an old cowboy over at Fort Klamath by the name of Elliot McKeever. And he was carrying it on, in a scabbard on his horse and it was far enough forward when his horse turned its head, uh, it split the stock right at the wrist. So while I was working on it, he was enjoying shooting this old 1873 Winchester in 3840. We started having the hammer follow down. So today we're gonna, we're gonna open this up and diagnose hammer fall down, talk, talk about um, what, what kind of things could cause that and how to correct them. Um, we'll talk a little bit about hammer and, and sear geometry. And as a bonus, I'll, I'll show you some of the steps I did to uh, repair and reinforce the wrist on this 1890. So stick around, this might be kind of an interesting episode. Let's go warm up. So let's talk about hammer follow down. Hammer follow down is just a situation where the hammer won't stay in the full cock position. So you can see this one here, it actually kind of hangs just a little bit, but it won't stay in. So when we cycle the action, the hammer is going to follow the bolt forward. Now this is particularly dangerous if, say, that hammer hangs up just a little bit on the sear, and we continue to cycle the action, then it gets a head of steam up. We can potentially have that, that uh, rifle fire out of battery, which is extremely dangerous. Okay, what usually happens is it'll drop into the, the half cock notch, um, and, and that's not a good situation either, because now we've got that hammer with a head of steam coming forward and, and that, that sear and half cock notch hitting and it, it may drop into the notch um, or it may actually hit on the front of the notch, the sear in the front of the notch and we can break that notch and damage the sear. So this is a problem that has to be corrected. We just, we don't have any choice. So th what typically is, is wrong is either the, the hammer notch has some damage or the sear has some damage or both. In this case, the owner tells us that this one has a hair trigger, so I, I'm assuming that it has been modified in some way, so the hammer notch is, is very shallow, and, and probably over time it's worn a little bit. Um, the nice thing about these, these toggle link guns, uh, 1873, 66, 76, is we can take the side plates off and we can look in there and see what's going on with the, the hammer notches and the sear. Now this one's, I suspect, maybe have a little different problem in that when we pull the hammer back, if we pull the trigger forward, it drops in and, and stays cocked. So I'm kind of thinking we may have some damage or even a broken sear or trigger spring. Um, so let's find out. We'll, we'll open this one up, see what it looks like. Um, take this side plate screw out. Well, best way to do that is leave the screw in just a little bit and push that other plate out. And then, then we can go in from this side and push this plate out. Okay, now we've got a situation where we're going to check out our toggle links since we're in here. Always, always, always when you have one of these toggle link guns apart like this, I guess I could drop that. Um, check your toggle links. What I, what I find is, is there's a fair amount of them with broken links. Um, if they've got a little bit of slop in them, that one doesn't seem too bad. That one's kind of sloppy. Look right down in the V of these, these uh, it's a little hinge here, and uh, yeah, I can see this one's cracked here, and so many of them are. We've got another one, this one here, while it's pretty tight, it's actually cracked too. I'll get, I'll get in here with the camera and get a little more of a close-up here in a minute of these toggle links and the cracks that are in them. So we're going to need to replace those toggle links. Let's take a look at this toggle link here first. Typically they crack right down in here, and if you, if hopefully you can pick that up on the camera, but there's a crack right across here. This is, this is a little hinge, and that's the weak spot right there. That basically it, it has enough leverage pulling against it that it cracks 
right here into the center where the where the pin hole is where the pin goes goes through it here now here's one that uh, out of a out of a 66 you can see that I, I've taken apart and you can see that one hopefully it'll focus a little bit there now that we've got the side plates off and the toggle links out we can see what's going on with this hammer and sear so let's pull back on the hammer here and here we've dropped into the half cock notch seems to be working properly let's go on back to the full cock notch and there we can see the the sear just riding over that notch now it is really really shallow um, somebody has worked back the face of that full cock notch a little bit it looks like to me but we've also probably got an issue with the, the sear spring or trigger spring I've heard it called either or both because um, if we we pull forward on that trigger then it stays in the notch where it's supposed to so it's either weak or broken I, I would think now the other problem is it, it looks like that we've got some rounding on both the the hammer notch the full cock notch and the sear top so we're going to have to clean those up a little bit stone those get those back in shape now because this one has been cut off a little bit on the front um, in, in severe instances, we, we may even have to weld that up um, to build up some more material. Um, we'll try first to just deepen it. We'll take some material off the back and, and deepen that notch that way. But if we, if, we're too, if we had too much material taken off the front here, then what can happen is, is when we pull the trigger, then the sear hits that half cock notch on the way down and it can damage either the sear or the the notch or both so we can we can remove just a little bit off the front of that that half cock notch but not too much so um, there are some real issues here with with hammer and sear geometry that we have to look at and before we figure out exactly how we're going to go about fixing this problem let's get into it a little further and see what that that sear spring looks like and now we can get that sear spring out and here we are and I I definitely can see the problem with this one this is a homemade spring and and you run into that a lot in some of these older guns you know back in the day they didn't have ready, ready availability of, of parts so somebody has made a, a sear spring here and probably it worked just fine for a long time but the the owner told me he just fell in love with shooting this thing recently and has been putting a lot of rounds through it so this probably wasn't heat treated properly and it just bent over time over usage instead of springing back every time after so many rounds through it it just stopped bending back okay now that we've got this lower tang out of the rifle it's real easy to see the sear here and here's the top surface that that falls into the hammer notches. On a 1873, the, the sear and the trigger are a two-piece design. So they, they share this pin here, um, but they, they do work a little independent of one another here. And I've got the sear spring out, so it's just kind of loose and flopping in there. Now the top of the sear is actually in pretty good shape. It's rounded just a little bit, and we'll want to clean it up just a, just a bit. Um, and as we drop it into the half cock notch, we see that, that it's holding well, um, it's capturing the top of that sear so we can't have it go off accidentally while it's in that half cock position. Uh, the half cock notch itself is in good shape. It's rounded on the front here as it's supposed to be. Now I talked a little bit about if we, if we take too much material off the front of this full cock notch that the, the sear can stub as it's going by on that half cock. And obviously that's not happening here if it is touching at all. It's on that rounded part and just riding over so there's there isn't any damage there to that half cock notch and the top of the sear looks pretty good they'd be beat up pretty badly if they were stubbing like that now as we get to this full cock notch here's where we start running into problems you see this thing's really shallow but not only is it really shallow but as if i don't hold pressure on the back of that trigger it just pops out and that shouldn't be happening once that, that sear is in that full cock notch, it should hold tight even without pressure on the back of the trigger, which is what the sear spring is designed to do. So we know we've got a problem with that notch. And not only is it too shallow, but it's at the wrong angle. And that's what's causing it to pop out of there. Now, if you, if you look closely, it's going to be kind of hard to see. You can feel it if you, if you do it on your own gun. 
if we let that that trigger roll out of that notch as it's rolling out the the hammer actually moves forward a little bit so that that uh, full cock notch has what we call a negative angle so the relationship between the sear and the full cock notch is negative which allows it to pop out of there and we'll, we'll show you exactly what i mean by a, a negative sear angle and uh, and positive and, and neutral here in a second but so we know we've got to not only deepen this notch a little bit now but we've got to change the angle a little bit now let's look at exactly how that needs to happen so here's a kind of a crude rendition of an 1873 full cock notch and a sear and when we talk about uh, the positive neutral or negative angles we're talking about the surface of the notch itself here and as you can see I've got this drone drawn in and of course this isn't the scale and and it's a little exaggerated but we've got this edge of the notch is lower than the inner edge and so what happens is is this sear is being pushed out this direction when we pull the trigger the hammer actually has to rotate slightly back and so that's how, what tells us we've got a, a, a positive angle in, in our hammer notch um, and we can feel that. It's, it's hard to feel, but you can feel that. If you put your thumb on the hammer and slowly pull that trigger, you'll feel that hammer rotate back if the notch is cut properly. Now, if we've got a, a neutral angle here, then of course it's just going to be flat across the top. And that's not a safe situation either. We want it to be just slightly positive. If it's exaggerated a whole lot, then real super positive, then it's going to really be hard to pull that trigger. We're going to really um, make that trigger pull a lot heavier. And of course, if we've got, like we do on the 73 we're working on now, where we've got a negative angle, where it's going up something like this, and of course that's exaggerated too, then we see that, you know, a sharp wrap on something and, and that sear could be forced right out of the notch and, and we could have a, an accidental misfire. Um, so that this is a, a, a really a dangerous situation we want to make sure that we're, we're just slightly positive now in the case of, of the hammer we're working on also somebody in the past has decided they didn't like um, the travel on that trigger so they, they decided to, to take off some of the material out here on the end of the notch and and we always want to work on the the part that they, is the, the cheapest and easiest to fix. So if we want to reduce the trigger creep or the travel of the trigger, um, we really don't want to touch this out here. Le leave the hammer alone, especially if the notch is in good shape. We can bob off a little bit back here and move the surface that contacts that notch out here further so now we instead of having the full length to travel across the whole notch we've got it shortened up a little bit and then we can always come back and weld that up a little bit and and move that back here if we don't like it so we can adjust that that trigger travel with the top of the sear rather than the notch itself okay so now we've got the sear and the hammer out we've got the sear here in the vise and we just need to to clean it up just a little bit. This, this sear edge has just rolled just slightly. So we're just gonna use a, a hard Arkansas stone and, and clean that up and try to bring that edge back just a little bit. Pretty simple process. The tougher part's gonna be with this hammer because we're gonna have to both deepen this, this full cock notch and change that angle from negative to positive. Um, that's a, that's a touchy situation. That's a tiny little little notch. Um, this is not something I recommend the home hobbyists do for a couple of reasons. First of all, um, just for safety's sake, this has to be done properly for this gun to operate uh, safely. The other thing is, is uh, you might notice that in the protected areas on this hammer, there's some beautiful case colors. Both of these are case hardened parts. Now where this one's already been worked on on the face here they've gone through that case hardening if case hardening is only maybe three or four thousandths of an inch thick um, and then you get into mild steel which doesn't wear very well so when i go back and, and deepen this notch and change that angle i'm going to go through the case there as well so this is going to have to be re-case hardened when it's done 
And unless you understand and are, are equipped to be able to do that yourself and get the, all the angles just right on these, um, leave it to a professional. Take it to a gunsmith. You can make a mess of one of these in a hurry and destroy a hammer um, to where you're going to have to go buy another hammer or take it to a gunsmith and have it all welded back up and redone anyway. So um, we'll get these fixed up here, we'll get them back into to the uh, tang over here and show you what they look like or what it should look like when they're in th ground at the proper angle or cut at the proper angle. Okay, so we've got this sear all cleaned up and put back in the lower tang here. Turned out real good. This hammer, we've got that notch cleaned up. We've got it deepened. Um, it's probably not quite as deep as, as factory, but that's okay. I think we're going to have a real nice crisp trigger pull here. So let's put it back together make sure that that sear is going to stay in the notch like it's supposed to. If we got our angles correct, it, it should. Get everything lined up here and get the hammer pin in. There we go. So, now the, the moment of truth. We'll pull it back into the half cock notch and I'll have to pull the trigger forward. I, I don't have the sear spring in there. I want to make sure it'll stay in the notch without the spring tension. And there we go. You know, it was when we went into the full cock notch before, it was just popping right back out. Now we hopefully we can bang on it and it won't move hit the back of the hammer it won't go so we've got those angles in there right so that it's positive and we know it's positive now um, where it was negative before and just popping that sear right back out of the notch so now we just I just want to maybe stone this up just a little bit more just to smooth it up really well um, we'll take it back apart we'll heat treat it because I'm sure we've we've taken enough off that we've gone through that case hardening layer that's only three or four thousandths I went ahead and hardened both the hammer notches and this top edge of the sear as well. I just wasn't sure that if somebody else had done work to it on the past. So let's check it out with a file, see if it skates, and it does. We've got a good hard surface. Remember, if you're going to take much material at all off of these notches or off of that sear edge, you have to surface harden it or they just won't last any time at all before they just roll right over. Okay, well we'll put this old rifle back together and we'll gather up that 1890 we showed you in the opening segment and uh, I'll meet you out on the ranch we'll do a little shooting. Well we rarely miss an opportunity to shoot some great Winchesters and today's no exceptions. We got a few milk jugs that need splattering out there. We haven't got them out there very far. I haven't sighted these in and this is just kind of a function test anyway and, and really just to, to have a little fun and shoot some great Winchesters. Um, the, the fellow that owns these rifles is a, is a shooter, so I'm going to assume that they're sighted in pretty well already. Oh, there we go. <laughs> These 3220s, they don't really just plaster those milk jugs. <laughs> but it's a shooter, boy. Okay, I've, I've welded up a little jump target out there, and we'll see if maybe we can hit it. It's going to be a little more of a challenge. Oh, I think I missed it. Uh-oh. We got a, got a jam here. It's trying to let two of them in onto the lifter. Well, okay, we can set that one aside and, and see how this uh, little 22 Winchester rimfire shoots. Oh, yeah, I put a hole in it, but it's kind of hard to see. Let's see if we can kick that old uh, jump target out there. There we go. Oh, put a hole in that jug. We're putting holes in them, but they're not doing much. <laughs> a little red mist off of that one. Let's get this other one up front. Must have hit it high. It's not draining out much.
Okay, well that does it. If you want to hang around a little bit, we'll head back down to the shop and I'll just kind of take you through a little bit of how we uh, fix this stock up on this 1890 Winchester. We, uh, we actually did more than just glue it back up. We did some reinforcing and, and whatnot. So um, you might learn a little something about uh, stock repair and reinforcement with a, with a cracked or broken wrist. Well, fortunately, the, the feeding problem with this 1873 turned out to be the ammo and not the rifle itself. I grabbed a box of, of factory 3220 cowboy action loads and uh, they weren't crimped very well. So one of them, it just pushed the bullet back into the case just a little bit, shortened it up enough that when it hit the carrier, then the, the next round, the head of it came out onto the carrier as well. And of course, then we've got a jam. These 73, 76s, 66s, they're all very sensitive to case length. So we'll solve that issue by not buying that kind of ammo anymore. Now the other thing I, I promised um, we'd show a little bit about the, the stock repair on this 1890. Now I actually I did try to do a whole episode on it and I filmed the whole thing but I'm not very tech savvy and I uh, was trying some new filming equipment and I lost some of the footage and I lost some of the audio so we'll have to wait to do a stock repair, a, a good comprehensive one a little later on when we get another stock comes in for repair. This one was a, a little interesting because the owner really wanted to save the original finish. Now this one had a heck of a crack in it all the way down the, the um, Tang channel here and clear out of it over here, but it didn't come into two pieces. So it was really hard to clean out. And this one had been, um, they tried to repair it before, so there was some old glue in there and, and whatnot, and that makes it really, really difficult. We really need to try to get that, that joint cleaned out to if we're going to have any chance of success. So in this one we had to pry this, this crack open as, as far as we could and then I used a syringe and, and tried to clean it out with acetone as best I could. Trying to keep that acetone off of the outside surface and we were, we were able to do that because that acetone if we get it on there it's going to take that, dull that finish at least and, or if not just take it completely off. So we got it all, all cleaned out. And uh, then we used a, a two-part epoxy, got it in into the crack, and, and then, of course, because we're down here into this where we can't get it open very far, where the, where the crack's really together, I actually used compressed air to try to blow that in there as much as possible. And we used a syringe to get it in there. Um, it's, it's a difficult thing to get that, that all the way back in there. Now because we've got some, some old glue in there still that we haven't been able to completely clean out, we're not going to get that crack to close up entirely. So it's going to be really hard to just disappear this crack as we repair it. But as you'll see, it, it turned out pretty darn good. We can pick it out, but it, it's, it's, you have to be looking for it. Okay, so when we got that, that epoxy in there, then we, we wrap surgical tubing tight and a lot of surgical tubing on it. And then um, out here in the back where, where it really needed some clamping, we, we actually put a, a, a clamp on the back end itself. We got it trussed up like a Thanksgiving turkey. And that's just the first part of the repair. Now, if we're just going to epoxy that crack, it is not going to be successful. And you might get it to stick, but eventually there's going to be a little side thrust on that and it's going to just blow open again right along that same crack. So we've got to reinforce it. So with this one, what we chose to do is to drill across because we, we could do that down into the tang channel and, and drill in with a, a quarter inch a drill bit and then install quarter inch dowels two through the top across the crack and one through the bottom tang across that crack And just to, to uh, make it even a little tougher, then we actually 
took this over to the mill, cut a little groove right across that crack, and then shoved it, and it had a, a uh, wood screw that we cut down to, to the width of the channel, and we, we cut a, a groove in there the same size as the minor diameter of that screw, okay, the, the, the smallest part of the screw. And then we actually installed that, shoved that down in there with epoxy over the top of it, and, and so we've got some, some grip force where we don't have a, a screw head going through the sides, but we've got a grip force across that crack, okay? And then we cleaned it all up, took it back over to the mill, cut the top of those dowels off with a, with a cutter head, and voila, here we are. Now, this, this crack, one, one side was just slightly higher than the other because we had some of that old resin in there, so then we had to go back and just wet sand and I, what I used was um, um, what is that stuff? Timberlux. That's that's a, a new stuff that's, that's fairly new that I really have kind of fallen in love with. So I just wet sanded with that Timberlux, um, took that that high edge off of it and really matched that thing up really well. So that's kind of an overview of how, how we did this one, how we we closed up that crack, how we reinforced it and then blended it all in really well and then we just did one coat hand finish of that Timberlux over the top and and this thing looks just like it did when when Elliot McKeever had it back in the 1930s and 40s. So here we've got three dowels going in, in different directions and then the one screw holding from the front epoxied and then cleaned up in the channel. So this this is a repair that I can't imagine how it would ever fail again. The, the wood will break before the repair would break. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. We touched on a couple of different repairs. One, how to repair the, the hammer and correct hammer follow down on this 1873, and two, a, a stock repair on this 1890 Winchester. Now we're gonna make a fella's day tomorrow and return a couple of these broken Winchesters back to him in work and order. We've got some really exciting episodes coming up and, and may even see a, a yellow boy or two in the, in upcoming episodes. So keep an eye out for that. Until next time, happy trails from the Cinnabar.